Zeke. Told y'all I was going to meet y'all back in the same place the next day. Today is Sunday. Second day at the track. Another group of people to learn drifting. And I brought my car so I could do some skids and make sure Winter Jam is a go. So let's sign in and get to the track. We are at Thunder Hill Raceway. I'll point a contact Mr. Jeff Pitts. Jeff Good Pitts morning. is a very Welcome. solid dude. He's going to give me the opportunity to check out the full five mile layout. Thunder Hill safety on course, course wise. Thunder Hill is the very first place I even turned a wheel and anchor for drifting. Is that right? Very first. Dude, I never had practice. The first that's Thunder cool. Hill event that oh, we had was the cool. first time I drifted. <laughs> Fun times. Yeah, Turn two, Thunder Hill is an extremely quick turn when you're sliding. Copy that, and I see some like, you know, race cars out here, so we're all going the same direction. And this leads to the best off-camber right-hander in the world over a crest. So you can imagine going into this corner about 50, 60 miles an hour, starting initiation right here, and then a lot of people go off in the runoff right there. Yeah, a lot of people just go straight that way. <laughs> yep. So if you get it right, get the inside wheels here, you can make a really aggressive transition and then head uphill, which is another scary section. Oh, you guys aren't running bypass, you're running up nope. the top. Yeah, That's over good the top stuff. This yep. And this is a very tall climb. And if you would want to stay course left, you'll be in the right place because see, you just would have ended off right there in the runoff again. After turn six, I'm not familiar with what's going to go on because this is the change of the layout. And this is a very fast track as well. Let's see some creative off marks there. <laughs> we just had the 25 hour enduro last weekend, and so some of these marks are from last weekend, some of them, some of them are from this weekend. Mm -hmm. So Coming up right here is about where my course knowledge ends because we're going to take a bypass into the new Thunder Hill West. Yes, yeah, so normally we'd be set up over here on the right, but in this case we're going to go over to the left, which is really unnatural if you're familiar with right, the yeah. Hill normally. Right, yeah, because typically we'd go off that direction towards that tower, but we are headed up and to another roller crest blind right crest. Goodness. Oh, wow. And then if you've run on Thunder Hill West, you know that from turn two down to turn three west is a pretty long straight. Well, in this case, it's even longer, so this braking zone into turn three west is pretty hard. Although yeah, it itself is a pretty fast corner, uh -huh. too. Yeah. And right here on the left is where we just put in our new curve. You know, uh, this used to be a big jump right here. Yes, I took the uh, underguard of the RX-8 off right here. See? See how smooth Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's still not, it's not gone entirely, but it's a little more of a flat spot than an actual positive intonation. Mm -hmm. So this is cool. I've ridden, I've driven both tracks independently and ridden motorcycle on the original Thunder Hill course. So I kind of have that both courses down pat, but running them both together is new experience we definitely have to come through this it's really interesting because the car setup is different like you mentioned before the three mile course is a very fast course mm -hmm. two mile course is a lot tighter mm -hmm. you know, especially this turn we're coming into right now seven now turn seven normally is over 90 degrees it's almost 180 here right but the way we have this set up is they're using the bypass so this actually skips those two corners uh -huh. And, and then straight to the straight away. this straight, right. Now, speaking of motorcycles, you got to come out someday and do one of their west side uh, clockwise days. Right. They come down the straightaway this way, uh -huh. and they use that bypass. So if you look back behind us, it's a blind crest into what would be your oh, first yeah, yeah, yeah. zone. That's pretty fun on a motorcycle. It's pretty, <laughs> pretty wild. You know, it's, it's crazy because I've uh, never gotten a chance to walk this track or anything 
So seeing it like this without being at speed, because you know you just come on the track and go at speed, but this is way so, cooler. See, this is two west here, but we're actually going to go off into the connector. This is our the ten connector. This is the other section that brings us back over to the east of the track. This is a really tricky corner to get right here because it's uh, oh it's, it's downhill. A, it's a little off camber, and it's really kind of an abrupt turn. You're straight into ten. Yep. And then it just drops you out right here into the old turn ten. Oh, that's and cool. of course, turn 10, you're not carrying nearly as much speed into this turn as you normally would as if you were coming down the hill from 9. Right. So I think this turn, when you're running in the 5 mile configuration, you're accelerating a lot harder for 10. Dude, one of the best pro am events was this corner. You remember the time we did it in the in the other direction? We came from, yeah, the from down, down there. This way <laughs> yeah. And, oh, yeah, we had a lot of fun in this section of the track. Oh, man. So many memories, dude. Last time I was on this track was Pro Am in 11. Thanks. Yeah, you gotta get, we gotta get you back out here. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Quick trackside fuel pump swap. Uh, vehicle recovery, busted ball joint. But everything's going pretty smooth. You're. Let me finish this up one time. Out to practice. They they're completely vanilla was drifting. And this is the car that they bought to drift in. They don't care about the content of the car or the look of the car. And they're out here doing what they gotta do. Having a blast. They got the skid pad to themselves, so I'm gonna change tires. Jesus. Oh Putting in work. But that's fire. Gonna change the tires and go back out. Stock reliable. Uh, affordable power. Rocking. All right, car tests out very good so far. Um, we're low fuel still, so I'm just gonna see if it fuel sloshes. And uh, I've got to fill it with some fuel, but let's just get a quick test off. fuel slosh okay cool 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 that's what I wanted to test later so we're <laughs> we're going through DV ratings because the car uh, is definitely probably the loudest thing out here we've rated it and it's it's pretty wild um, we've done it on the dyno and we've done it on the track at speed so, I kind of felt like the echo was gonna be wild with these um, garages here yeah, yeah. the first two runs I didn't really floor it I floored it on last run I floored it and I put it in third and left it under heavy load and it's it's 
shriekingly loud. This guy's asking for, uh, I'm looking for this SPL meter that can read up to 180 dB. This guy says, 180 dB, what proverbial are you measuring? A nuclear explosion at four meters? I'll make them happy, I'll shut it down <laughs> for, you know. Yeah. Yeah, well, no, I mean, shit, it's not even about that now. I want to know how the hell it got measured at 160. I just don't, I just don't think it's possible, man. But you got a turbo, tinny. though. Yeah. Turbos make, so your exact setup, NA, should be louder, in theory, you know. But it's, it's, it's really strange. That is really strange. <laughs> Dude, think about it. Wild. They're racers at a racetrack that complained about noise. It has to be loud. Oh no 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 no! It was like it was like the restaurant guy and a couple. Of, oh really? Like Thunder Hill people. Yeah. Oh, because the and other like, dudes you know, came even, by. Even even stock exhaust annoys the turn eleven flagger, but we don't. Oh really? Yeah, no. <laughs> oh well, he must have hated life because I came through their third <laughs> gear and rolled the whole wall from the top to the bottom. So I'm personally interested, <laughs> but in the interest of why we have a sound limit, we probably shouldn't <laughs> test it. Mm -hmm. Yeah 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 yeah. You know what I mean, like. Anyway, I'm just like, I'm blown away. Well, that's cool. Somebody told me the other day, they said that, um, uh, they said, oh yeah, I've got an uncorked NASCAR motor or something or other, and they said that it's, uh, that it's 125. Okay. And, uh, and even that, some of the other guys were like, no, that's impossible. Like, 125 is just not, because also the other thing is that in terms of physical effects on a person, like, just, mm -hmm. like, pain from the noise and all that mm -hmm. stuff, like, the difference between 100 and 110 is not the same as the difference between 90 and 100. Mm -hmm. Like, it goes up, like, exponentially. So, mm -hmm. so I mean, a car that's 103 out there will sound, like, really loud. A car that's 110 will, like, rattle shit off the shelves in our in our office, you know? <laughs> at, at your age, I'm surprised you can even handle that. Like, for me, I start, yeah. <laughs> yeah, shit. You know, like, I keep earplugs in. I was going to say, yeah, I feel, like, I feel like people, you know, it's like over 30. You like drifting, but then you're like, you know, I can drift and have just as much fun with a quiet exhaust. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at, personally. I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, I want to be able to hear it, but I don't need it to be loud. All right, well, thanks, dude. <laughs> All right, dude. I'll see you. Okay. Uh, from the racetrack, got a minor, or not even, we won't say minor, got a noise complaint. I know the car exceeds DB, so we didn't even check it. We just know because it got the concern of somebody to come over here with the DB meter, we just know it's too loud. So the car is officially too loud for Thunder Hill. I mean, what you gonna do, man? I, 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 I don't have a DB meter with me at all times when we change things. I just know it's loud as hell. So this is my second day here at Thunder Hill Raceway and we just have to test this car because right here on the big skid pad was the last time I drove this car. Super D, New Year's Eve. We're just coming up in a couple weeks, but first we gotta tackle Sonoma Drift Winter Jam. The car is okay. It's running fine, it's working fine, but it's not perfect fuel filter that's running right along the driver's side underbody of the car i feel like that's probably the last link to the puzzle of making sure that my fuel and everything is perfect because it still has a little bit of a starvation but we're still getting to the point where it's back to where it was so very cool car kind of a bummer that it got tagged and bagged for being too loud you can hear it on idle as you get around to the back that's epic loud just on idle baby So, keeping it on the front side is probably the best thing. It just ricochets off of the walls there on the skid pad, which sent the sound everywhere else. See, it don't sound that bad from right here. But we're going to get back on track with a couple of the other cars that the guys brought, and uh, I guess we'll just finish out the day. Oh, goddamn, boys. Phil was letting Johnny go hammer dog on his car. Uh, we got a guy that came to check us out watch us drifting he was watching by the gate so they put him in the car to let him get the experience and johnny you drove the wheels off her <laughs> all right so uh, put this tire in there huh um oh, nah. oh yeah do we have autos on available crazy super crazy eventful day the IS suffered a ball joint wound early in the game, blew his fender out, 
we got to set on some wood because we definitely need jacks to get that other car taken care of you can see the ball joint blast city in there um so we've got to fix that we've also got to repair that coolant line ah man we've got some work to do the day is coming to an end what a freaking eventful day um kind of fun though cars cool things are buttoned up uh, we're getting everybody ready to get home so i feel like we've had a successful day many casualties but i feel like we've had a successful day what we're trying to do right now is get this your is get this broken ball joint car on this trailer <sighs> wish us luck because this is uh this is wild just pray yo <laughs> And I know it's kind of useless filming this because it's like literally the dead of night. But I just wanted to test this low light on this camera. Yeah, so that made it work. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so we got that on. We're strapped down. Everybody left. We're the last ones at the track. We head home, y'all. Successful day of skids, even though ruckus happened. God dang, yo. Fuck. Two hours later. Yo, this night is never gonna end. It's now an hour after the hour that we was already saying was the hour few past the hour that we needed to leave. So the car is a little too far back, and Phil just had the scariest swap tank slap on the freeway. So we're on the side of the road. He's gonna pull it further forward towards the tongue. Hopefully that works out. I mean, it got violent. We're trying to get home. I've never seen that before in real life. Like, I felt a little bit of wiggle, but I never saw something violent where it crosses the lanes. That was insane. Tomorrow. I got home I jumped straight to the garage and knocked this R6 out there was a couple of complications at ride on and uh, I just went and grabbed my bike back gonna go ahead take it somewhere to fully get it stripped down the harness stripped down and everything completed to race bike form but um, apparently we have gotten to the end of this project for the most part got it all together she looks really good only thing left to do is wave rotors and do a little bit of powder coating I'm going to end up doing wave rotors front and back and uh, also got the exhaust to do as well. She's such a good looking bike, man. Look at this. I'm so happy to have it completed. This is a project that is finally done and we can move on to something else. So I'm going to powder coat the rear wheel, the rear subframe and the front wheel. Uh, then get the number plates there put on the back. And I'm also going to do number plate on the front, but I got to see which design I want to go with because there's a few different types of designs for the front. But super hype about this. Uh, I'm going to do some color matching on these bar ends, either that part or this one right here. Uh, depends on the scheme that I'm going to go with. But I'm hype, man. This bike is done. It's completed. Uh, the profile of the front looks really good. This double bubble is not perfect to where I want it, but it's a lot better than the other ones. And uh, yeah, man, very solid bike. The mismatch leverage is just my thing. Some of you might know where I get it from, but um, some have seen my gloves in the vast. I'll explain that a little bit later, probably when we go actually do the track day. But we are complete. This uh, tank grip pad is something new to me. It's hard, but it's soft at the same time. Really weird concept. It's kind of like a gel, but it's on the bike. It's, it's really firm but then it's kind of soft to the touch. A really weird concept, but whatever. Uh, so this bike is complete, and it's time to move to another project as we finalize this and then go send it to a track day and, you know, see if I still got it. Pretty sure that I do, but uh, we're going to see. We're going to see. So this vlog is over. This bike project is complete, almost, we'll say 90%, and uh, it's time to move forward winter jam coming right up y'all winter jam so next vlog will be winter jam this vlog is done